Good evening, everybody. It's Nick Thompson, the gut doctor here, uh, coming to you this fine Thursday, the 20th of January. I'm talking to you here from the Dermadog shed, as you can see. The reason I'm here is because uh, I need to get a good 4G connection. And this is the shed is up the hill a little bit from the house. And uh, uh, because we're in the village, uh, I get a much better uh, connection up from here. Um, I hope you're well. It's the new year. I think that 2022 is going to be a good year. I can feel it in my bones and I really think that uh, there's going to be a year for change and a lot of good things are going to happen. I sincerely hope so. I hope you are well and I hope your birds are well. Uh, we've got this uh, avian flu at the moment so all the birds are in which is a which is a real drag really but um and and just thinking about that just uh, five minutes ago i just thought ah all these birds in uh, they could actually benefit have a look at some of the products that we're going to be discussing towards the end of the show some of the herbal products they might actually help with the stress just to give the birds a bit of a bit of a zest a bit of a a boost so that just you know that's not what we're talking about tonight but um just uh, bear that in mind when we're going through these things tonight we are going to be talking about uh chickens worms and herbs <laughs> i've been preparing it all day i should know by now chickens worms and herbs that's what we're going to do today so without any further ado what i've got two things to do i need to get rid of that and then i need to put me down there and then bring in the slides so that's what that's that's what i'll do let's do this one first with a bit of luck so let's get rid of that first of all but think there and then i'm going to go down there like this I'm sure Rosie would be very, very impressed with all this wizardry. And then I'm going to bring in the slides. And Rosie, if you can, uh, if you can just give me a thumbs up so that I know that everybody can hear me, uh, and that would be great. We are joined this evening. We've got uh, Michelle Bard Charden, and she is in Woodstock, which is just outside Chicago. So hello, Michelle. And Zeb is, uh, 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 I called. Zeb, uh, 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 a man one day, because I thought it was a Zebediah, but actually Zeb is a, is a she. And very good evening to you, Zeb. Debbie Toby is there. The slobbery dog is there. Fantastic. And Fiona is with us this morning, this evening. Uh, lots of other people, uh, but it's lovely to see you all there. It's great to be together, isn't it? You know, in these, uh, in these strange times. Anyway, enough of me. Let's go to the slides. So that's there. Uh, if if you can confirm, Rosie, that you can see the slides and still hear me, I'd be really, really grateful. So we spoke about um, ectoparasites last time. Ectoparasites, that's the parasites on the outside. Uh, 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 scaly leg and, and, and the, the bugs that live on the outside of the chicken. Uh, and that was actually I looked at the dates and that was a, that was February last year. This this year we thought we would go inside and we're going to talk about the worms on the inside. It's fascinating business. I'm going to show you a few pictures of worms. So if you're of a delicate disposition, <laughs> you're, you're watching the wrong show, I'm afraid. But it's fascinating stuff. Bear with it. I won't put them on for very long, and you can you you are uh, allowed to hide behind the sofa if uh if if you don't like it the key is promoting health promoting health without the use of drugs drugs are fantastic they have their place i haven't got a problem with them in the slightest but why use something when you don't have to that's my battle cry okay so let's just do the basics first of all um and we did this last year but i'll just a, a little refresher what is parasite a parasite is an animal or plant that lives on or in another animal or plant that's fairly basic stuff if we look at the diagram here we've got 
the black chicken is, has, has got some uh, parasitic worms they produce eggs and those are deposited onto the ground and this is called a direct life cycle and this is an example of a large round worm we're going to talk about those in a second uh, the uh, uh, another or even the same chicken can then when they're scrabbling around in the mud can pick up those eggs and it will then infect the chicken directly okay a direct life cycle um parasites worm parasites invoke two things in humans they either and or uh induce revulsion uh or fear or both okay but actually there aren't many parasites depending on where they happen to land in the in in the body of the human or the hen um most of them are not uh, particularly dangerous until they get into much larger quantities so the trick is to if if we do when we're worm counting and we do find worms is just to nip nip it in the bud um ideally using herbs but at a push uh, using a pharmaceutical so there aren't many deadly parasites there are some and we've got some there malaria a uh, lots and lots and lots of gut worms coccidia and, and and what have you can be but if you catch things early and you've got really good management and you've got really good preventative measures going on then you're probably pretty good the crackling you hear is i've got the fire on because it's absolutely freezing in this shed again the take home the take home message from this evening is that management and prevention is the key to managing uh worm maintaining worm free chickens it's not the repeated use of drugs that is unsustainable unsustainable from an ecological point of view but also unsustainable because they're all petroleum based petroleum derived and sooner or later we, we the, the, the price of petrol is going to just keep going up and up and up and up and we're going to have less and less of it so we have to think of other ways to be boxing clever when it comes to internal worms in chickens I think it's very important, and we weren't even particularly taught this at college, but I think it's important to look at not just the parasite, not just the worm, but to look at the host as well, because there is an interaction between the two. The essence of a parasite, when we think about it, is to survive, is to reproduce and to hide, hide from the immune system and any defensive measures that the the host takes. On the other hand, the essence of the host is again to survive and reproduce because that's what evolution is all about, but it is to defend themselves against infections from uh, parasites, from bacteria, fr from bu uh, bugs, okay? Now, obviously, most of the bacteria in the chicken on a on a day-to-day -day basis are doing a lot of good so we don't you know the thought of, of, of getting rid of all of them most of the viruses in the chicken on the day-to-day -day basis are really really good exactly the same as us so that's important so i think if we're looking at this thing from a holistic perspective what what is a much better strategy than just thinking okay i've got to worm the chickens every six months what was a much more clever strategy is why don't we promote the very very best health in the host so that they are able to defend themselves as nature intended and so if we do that by using some of the things we're going to discuss this evening we enhance the survival of the host we jeopardize the parasite which is what it's all about and we have those happy hens. Some people talk about this interaction as being a little bit like a war. It's a war scenario. I don't really like the war scenario. I think of it's it's more like a dance where one partner is leading, is able to 
dictate what happens okay now in the parasite host uh, hopefully that's the host because when the host is in charge then the parasite has a, a much harder time uh, in the in the dancing analogy it's not necessarily the man who is leading i think it's it's a two-way thing whoever is leading the dance that's the host we want them to be in charge and they are they are able to enhance and deploy every every aspect of immunity of defensive strategies against the the, the worms that's really really where we need to be okay so let's cut to the chase we've got three type three groups of worms in in chickens we've got our old friends roundworms and tapeworms which you'll be familiar with from our videos on uh, the parasites of cats and dogs but in addition chickens get this thing this worm called gapeworm syngamus trachea and that's a picture of them there they look quite big but actually you've got to think that the trachea the windpipe of a chicken is not that big so they look they're about two centimeters long okay so we've got roundworms gapeworms and tapeworms okay let's have a look at those sequentially one two and three so have a look at the roundworms first of all that's a large roundworm just there uh, i won't keep it on for very long like i promised and they that the, the large roundworms they look a bit like spaghetti and um you can keep an eye out for them but very often you won't see any in the in the stool if you're a wise parasite you don't advertise that you are there which is why we use uh, do worm counts on our chickens every three months because we can spot with the microscope we can spot the eggs okay and that's really really and that's another thing that i'm going to emphasize this evening so um you can there, there are different types <coughs> different types of roundworms hair worms thread worms but by far the most common is the large roundworm and they all have direct life cycles and they all work in the same way they spread from chicken to chicken <clears throat> it's quite a fast life cycle it's a 28-day life cycle the significance of that is that if you bring in one chicken or one chicken grubs up some some worms from wherever that can spread to the others quite quickly which is why testing every three months is is a good idea rather than worming with a pharmaceutical every six months say which is what what you'll see in most textbooks most of the websites if we do the the worm count every three months then we will stay ahead of that and we will be able to test before you get a significant build up within any one bird or spread between birds in in your flock we normally find the roundworms in the in the gut that is the crop the gizzard the soft uh, crop and the gizzard uh, but you can see them in the uh, esophagus as well up at, up at the top of the uh, digestive tract and remarkably they've even been found in the oviduct that is to say in the in the shoot which is going to produce the egg which means that you will get a, a live roundworm in your egg which would be really really hideous if you just dug into your boiled egg at six o'clock one morning and you found a, a cooked well cooked roundworm imagine that so we test 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 in order to uh, uh know what the worm status is of our worms we use herbs 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 as preventatives that's the way to do it to minimize the total life use of pharmaceuticals that's what we're that's what we're all about okay so number two is gapeworm syngamus trachea now syngamus trachea is one of my favorite and it's one of the uh, one of the worms that i distinctly remember from college because the two the, the it's not actually one worm it's two worms which are permanently mating the thin headed uh, worm that you see in the picture there that's the male and the thicker headed the broader headed uh, worm there is the female and they are permanently attached to each other and they they're ingested by the mouth they go to the gut they make their way to the trachea where 
they cause, if you're just looking at the picture here, they cause this <gasps> gaping, this kind of, <clears throat> the vet, a vet would call it dyspnea. It's a, <gasps> the, the, because their, their trachea windpipe is getting filled with more and more worms, they have difficulty getting breath into their lungs. And therefore, if you suspect gapes at all, get in early, test early, confirm your your uh, uh, probable diagnosis, and um, because you'd have to use heroic doses, potentially pretty nasty doses of pretty not nasty, pretty pretty ridiculously high doses of herbs in order to get any. Uh, significant levels within the mucus in the trachea um, I think that you may have to revert to uh, a pharmaceutical approach we're going to talk about flubendazol when we talk about treatment and this might be one of those times that one would go straight to a um, to a pharmaceutical however if you are using herbal products to maintain gut that hygiene then it's less likely that the the worm when it comes into the gut before it travels to the windpipe uh it's more, less likely that 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 egg is going to get a foothold within the gut and thus complete the life cycle so i think there is benefit to using preventative herbal products um so they, they call this the bird bird people call this gaping hence gape worms and uh it, it's seen more in young birds because their immunity they haven't developed the immunity that you will see with older birds and you'll see it more especially if there's there's a lot of interaction with wild birds and pheasants for example we've got pheasants up and down the valley here galore um unlike i mean all worms if given enough time can be fatal but gateworm can can escalate pretty quickly so i think it pays to get in there very very quickly gateworms you usually are not a direct life cycle they can be a direct life cycle if the if the uh, infected hen coughs eggs up onto the pasture and that's that's eaten by other hens then there can be a direct but it's it's often uh, an earthworm or a snail or a slug will eat the the uh, the eggs. The chicken will then eat the snail, the slug, or the uh, the, the uh, earthworm, and that and thus you've got an intermediate host. Okay, it's a technicality, but people like that. I think people often say, "Oh, I like a little bit of science," to, to, so that I can learn about how to how to manage these things should we not have free range eggs free range hens i think we should at the moment they're all in but generally speaking i think there is mm, there's much more benefit to to giving your birds as much space as you're able um so um there we go they have got so around with they have a, a 28 days life cycle these guys the gateworms have 14 days which is why they can escalate really quite quickly um so there you go that's gateworms now let's just have a little, little look at, uh, at tapeworms they're very similar to dog and cat tapeworms um i haven't shown you a picture because you know what they look like they're like a i was trying to think of a good example a bit like if imagine you took 30 white pillowcases and you sewed them badly end to end and then shrank them down to a few inches long that would be what a, the average tapeworm looks like okay these segments they shed the segment right at the end and that carries the eggs off into the environment um they are uh, they are then eaten by the slugs and snails and so free-ranging birds more susceptible to, to, to tapeworms they are not as common tapeworms in birds as as the roundworms um but you you do see them 
they because they're, it's a fairly slow moving it's a six week life cycle because it's a fairly slow moving life cycle they they will affect the birds very very subtly they're not always picked up they're not always able to be picked up on a uh, on a worm count uh, so this is why using uh, preventative measures I, we use with our birds that our birds are just over here by the way um uh, they've been put to bed for the night and all very happy um i um, and we use uh vermex uh, as a herbal uh, preventative on a on a on an ongoing basis to make them much less susceptible much less attractive to any passing worms be they tapeworms gape worms or round worms um you might be able to see some tapeworm segments on the on the poo of the chickens but if you don't see it, it doesn't mean that they haven't got it so this is why worm count is really is the, the the way to do it every three months just do it as a routine thing whenever you get the gas bill send a sample off to your favorite laboratory okay so let's talk about treatment as I was researching for today, I came across this. This is a fantastic uh, group, the British Hen Welfare Trust. Okay, they're, they're looking out for the welfare of hens, obviously. And um, on their site, they have got this, this one page which, said, which talks about the importance of worming chickens. And I thought, hmm, I would suggest to them most humbly that rather than talking about worming of chickens i think that they should say the importance of maintaining worm free chickens and then that puts the emphasis for me onto management and preventative measures rather than treatment measures if you see what i mean maybe i'm being pedantic but that's what struck me when i saw that page so let's get into it so if i put my conventional veterinary hat on flubendazole is the uh licensed product that one would use uh if you are going to use it i think that it's very wise to have a chat with your vet um and uh you know if you have to use it then great use it it's 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 effective um again we have to use these things with regard to um, the health of the environment, but also we need to be thinking of the future. The more we use these products, the more we will be pushing uh, antelmintic resistance. You know, just as we have antibiotic resistance, we, we the more you use these type of anti drugs, the more you will develop bugs that are resistant to the use of that antibiotic that anti uh ant helmintic okay which is a word the posh name for a worm okay so if we can use other means i.e for example herbal products maximally and use our pharmaceuticals minimally then that will help to keep them for more emergency use and will extend their useful life in the future so i think for me and what we do with our birds is we go heavy on the herbal products and almost never i can't remember the last time we used drugs on these guys we do worm count them and and, and what have you but heavy on the herbs light on the pharmaceuticals would be my strong 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 recommendation also management management is 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 greater than any any kind of intervention be it pharmaceutical or herbal the, you know the herbal products can be part of your management but the way you look after those birds really really is key and let's talk about some some little tips of that before i do that i've just started using layers pellets with vermex in it the, this is the, the herbal uh, blend from vermex and 
seems to be going really, really well. I'm really, really, really pleased with it. And it saves having to buy layers palettes and Vermex because it all comes in one. So there you go. I sound like a salesman. I'm not. I'm just telling you, this is what we, we're using and I really like it. Okay, so uh, a few tips about prevention and management. This is the key slide. Okay, guys, this is the one that, that, that you need to watch very, very carefully. So worm count, worm count count worm count doesn't matter which laboratory you use we use wormcount.com at my practice and i think they're great but westgate are also very good and fet lab and, and there are there are numerous ones do a google and you'll find them it's really important because then you will know what your the bird's worm status is and you'll be able to to uh to, to manage that appropriately to save money if you've got you know more than just a couple of birds then uh, what you can do, we've got eight birds out there. You can take you can take a sample from a number of different uh, stools and you put them into one. So you take a hazelnut sized sample and you put it put them together, five or six or eight samples all together, and they they will mix. And then the lab will look at that. And the reason that you do that, apart from saving money, you know rather than doing eight different eight samples and having to pay eight times, you can do a single sample because if they find any worms at all, you're going to just treat all the, all the birds anyway. Okay, so it makes sense from a, not just a, an economic perspective, from a um, just common sense perspective. Clean ground is very important. What you don't want to do is to feed them. Okay, they're in at the moment, but... Um, if you've got um, free range birds, you don't want to be feeding them in exactly the same spot every single day. The ideal would be to move the feeder and the water station, move that around as much as possible so that you don't get any foul sick area, bird sick area where you get a buildup of worm eggs and coccidia and goodness knows what okay so clean ground is really important as much as you can if they're in a fixed run and many birds are and they definitely are at the moment because of avian flu then it's potentially a bit more difficult but some of the things that one can do is one can put um wood chip on the on the floor and then either using a disinfectant like Vercon S or something like that, or from a, a more natural perspective, you 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 could sprinkle the uh, the shavings the the wood chip with um, something like diatomaceous earth, which will uh, have will have an anti-parasitic effect on the and will will help to cleanse the that wood chip so uh just a thought yeah because because most of these worms are their a direct life cycle apple cider vinegar is wonderful i'll show, show you a picture of the the, the vermex one i'll tell you a story about that in a second as well and that his, historically is thought you know in the old days farmers used to combine apple cider vinegar with garlic and, and i've heard of them drenching sheep for example with that and um you can see the logic of that for worming but apple cider vinegar is very good at promoting a really great environment within the gut a great environment means a great microbiome a great microbiome means healthy gut healthy gut is has better immunity it means that those young birds will develop immunity more more readily and more quickly so apple cider vinegar is is is, is a friend to the uh to the chicken keeper if the, if the birds are on grass and you're able to uh, cut the grass, then that's great because then you'll get more sunlight. Uh, worm eggs don't like sunlight. Um, and if your birds are free range when they're able to, then uh, uh, and they're coming in contact with wild birds and um, slugs and snails and worms and things like that, then they're going to be more prone to worms than those which are maybe. Uh, kept in, in 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 coops or in a in a in a run so um but we're going to be worm counting on a regular basis so uh that will be part of our 
vigilance for these things. Like I say, poultry zest is great with any birds. We we use it with these guys. Um, but I think especially potentially useful because the birds are in and they're going to be stressed with that, even more stressed than you. Uh, I use poultry zest when I'm uh, looking at recuperation of, of birds uh, after drug treatment, antibiotic treatment, or any drug treatment comes to that, worming, you know, pharmaceutical worming treatment, or if there's uh, stress. Uh, so I think that's, that's potentially very, very useful. This is the, the vermic, I sound like a salesman again. I'm not, I'm just telling you how it is. Um, they were very kind. They sent me a bottle of this vermix and don't tell them, but I haven't given it to the birds or the dogs because I'm using it myself. And what I'm doing is every morning I get some uh, some vermix in a glass like orange squash, you know, just a small amount at the bottom. You top it up with water and it's so refreshing. I don't eat, eat food breakfast these days. Gave that up a long time ago. But apple cider vinegar is is really wonderful you should be giving it to your chickens uh but that's just a little a little uh a little story um which is very very uh, very good again it's very good for us our microbiome and what have you so get into the uh the apple cider vinegar um this is an organic product which is great um i can't say enough good things about it you can share it with your chickens and with your with your dogs this is the poultry zest which i really like we've discussed that earlier but also they do the uh, a couple of others daily plus the daily plus and the keep well and you're going to say to me which do i choose and i would suggest uh, give them a buzz and they'll help you with that but the the real answer would be uh try them and find the one that works best for your birds because it will be dependent on the birds, the breed, how much medication they've had in the past, uh, what 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 uh, management, what, how, how you keep those birds, what their diet is, um, and how good the microbiome is. So I would say trial and error, see which one works the best, stick with that, that's fantastic. Um, really, really nice, again, we're using herbal product to reduce the amount of pharmaceuticals that we are obliged to use on the birds. So just to conclude before we go back, um, uh, management, 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 it really, really, really is so important. As part of the, the your, your management, worm counting is your friend. Every three months, when you get the gas bill, do a worm count group count save yourself a fortune and if you get worms uh talk to your vet um diet is really important we haven't discussed it i'm assuming you're feeding really well scraps from the kitchen is a great idea uh we have given up give, giving our birds any farinaceous material like bread and rice and what have you because we were getting a few cases of sour crop and as soon as we cut out the 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 sugary the pasta the bread the uh the rice of this world as soon as we cut that out we haven't seen sour crop for years now um and herbs herbs incredibly useful in the management of our birds and i just thought I would share a juicy picture of Syngamus. There you go. That's a that's one centimeter across there. It's probably two two centimeter uh, thing, and you don't want those in your bird's trachea. I just thought it's 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 just such a great um, parasite that I would share it with you before we go. So next time uh, we're going to be in four weeks, Thursday the seventeenth Feb, seven p.m. as usual. And we're going to be going we're going to be doing uh getting it right from the start caring for young animals it's going to be similar to what we did last year but there are so many people coming to us with uh with young dogs especially everybody's getting a puppy because of the covid lockdown puppies um and so we're going to be talking about that it will be similar to what we did last year but there's there's 
some new information that, that, that we're going to bring out as well. So really looking forward to sharing that with you. Now, let's go back to there. Let's see what the time is. OK, sorry, five minutes over. Let's have five minutes. Let's just have five minutes of uh, a little chat between us. We'll go like that and then we'll go like that. There we go. OK, so let's have a look and just go back for looking at any questions janet nixon is here hi janet um is that gateworm more deadly uh yeah gateworm is because it will you can if you're if you're if your gut is half blocked you can still function if your trachea is half blocked you're potentially in bad in a bad way so so yeah potentially it is more serious uh, um, <laughs> Zeb says I could hear about worms all the time I think they're fascinating I think they're fascinating not everybody shares our fascination though Zeb um, when you think of them lying in wait in a bitch's teeth ready for the pep to ingest yeah I know it is genius it's brilliant uh, Michelle you like the idea of the uh vermex within the, the 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 layers pellets i do too i think it's a really great it's a bit of a no-brainer really isn't it um so yeah i'm i'm good i mean if you don't want to use it don't that's fine but i think i think it's a great idea uh okay let's have a look uh what about nesting locations yeah i would move nesting locations susan um because you will get a lot of traffic going into those nesting boxes and so you know uh, it's different now because they're all in but generally speaking moving the nesting boxes so so that you don't have it will get muddy yeah at the bottom of, of the of the uh, plank going up into the hen house that's going to get a bit muddy so i think moving those around as much as you're able is a great idea um let's have a look let's have a look uh sorry dog that's a pleasure nice to see you uh and zeb thank you as well um okay fiona says with a multi-dog household would you suggest a group sample also okay yes i would again if you are yeah because if one of the dogs has worms then the chances are the, the other dogs also have worms or are likely to get it fairly soon, okay? If, especially if there's some kind of intimacy between them, uh, if you know what I mean. Okay, um, right, Debbie Jones, worm accounts, are they always correct or can they sometimes miss worms? Yes, um, yes, ideally, if in doubt, a three-day sample is better. I would go for a three-day, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, put them all in a bag, send them off as a single mixed sample. Yes, off you go, great because you're more likely to find things there. Can you test for coccidiosis? I think so. Different labs will say different things to that question. So just talk to the lab, uh, but I think they will pick up coccidiosis. Um, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Dirty bottom, is that a syndrome of worm? Yes, it can be, definitely. If you've got a, a bird with a cheek, what, you'll, what, what we find with these guys out here is every now and again, one of them will have a, a dirty bump. Now, it might be that they've got a bit of enteritis or something, but um, it would definitely be worth taking one sample from that bird and sending it off to the lab. I think that's a very good idea. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Amanda says, hello, any advice on getting the birds to eat the vermex? mine tend to leave the pellets yes get the layers pellets with it mixed in okay and then they will eat it because it's in the layers pellets and uh, bob's your uncle that would be that's what i would suggest um let's have a look uh, uh, uh do, 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 do. last few last couple uh let's have a look uh what's a great ratio of enclosed size to the number of of chickens approximately nick oh my goodness that's a really good question i would suggest that if they are enclosed you they will need the biggest you can give them is the obvious answer what would be the minimum 
I, I, the honest answer is I don't know what the RSPCA minimum size, but I would imagine it, it's going to be about between two and four square feet per bird. I wouldn't be comfortable personally going less, less than about four feet per, per, per bird, but uh, I'm not sure what the legislation uh, would, would guide. It's a good question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Fiona says, I've just saved her a fortune on testing. Fab, lots of testing. And if you do group testing, it'll save you a fortune. That'd be great. Well done. Brilliant. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Mary Capillaria, yes, yes. Uh, herbal products will, will help to promote uh, better gut health. Good gut health means good microbiome and good gut immunity. And that is a, a, a strong way to, to uh, support great health, great gut hygiene in your birds. So there we go. Um, um, there we go. Da, da, da. Susan says, don't feed anything else, e.g. other pellets. They won't other pellets they won't start i'm not quite sure what you mean there um the other alternative is you can get uh, a liquid formulation of vermex and you could mix that with something yummy a kind of a mash of some sort and i, I imagine you'll be able to find some type of mash that will that will entice the birds and if you do that you just do them three days every month for example unless you want to put a small a, a bit in every single day um so there we go Oh, M. Marie says eight birds per square meter. That's a little bit tight, um, I think. But that there you go. That's the legislation that, uh, according to her, and I'm sure she's right. But I would check it uh, yourself. Okay, eight birds per square meter. Um, guys, that's us. We've had a good 41, 42 minutes. It's great to be back in the saddle talking to, to you. Um, any problems, uh, do give the guys at Vermex a buzz. Uh, have a have a chat with Cheryl, and she'll look after you. And there you go. I think I think we're done. I'm not back in the swing of doing talks yet because it's so new this year. But listen, it's great to see you. Thank you very very much for joining us. We'll see you on the 17th of Feb to do youngsters and um it'll be really really great any problems then give the office a buzz and they will sort you out um if you want to oh see the one on ectoparasites then just uh uh it was last year last february uh if you go to the vermex website and go back you go down down to last february then if it's still there then uh you'll be able to see that one and do the the uh, external parasites are beginning to waffle now. So I'm going to go. It's great to see you. All the very best. Keep well, and we will uh, see you in a month's time. Thank you very much.